All right, it's much blurrier now than I it was, but whatever. Um, sorry about that. How does theosis tie into the orthodox view of heaven and hell? And do the sacraments change our hearts to love God more clearly? Um, uh, well, they're the holy mysteries. We never we don't call them sacraments. There's uh, many people wind up adopting the Western terminology, but it's problematic. There's either no sacraments, one sacrament, or an infinity of sacraments. So the holy mysteries being baptism and the Eucharist um, a change our hearts to love God more clearly. Sure. I mean, they're mysteries. They, they Yes. If somebody were to say that, I would say yes. Is that a statement of, of, of the Orthodox Church? It can be. Um, yeah, I, I guess so. Um, it can always be, when spoken of in in truth and love, um, it, it's like it's describing a relationship, right? So uh, you definitely know what it is when you hear it. Uh, it, it yeah, I'll just say yeah. Uh, how does theosis tie into the Orthodox view of heaven and hell? Well, theosis continues. Um hell would be uh, non-theosis. So the refining, the fire, the holy, the fire God, um, not refining the dross away from the silver, but burning up like chaff. Um, so you wind up inheriting a, a resurrection, but unto your own passion and devices or whatever, your own choices. Are those, are there people who are in hell, quote-unquote, um, who can be leased from it through prayers or through, um, not pr let's say intercessions or uh, out of whatever, you know, blah, 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 blah. Yes, but even that, when talking about the West, it denotes a fundamental misunderstanding of heaven and hell aren't different places. They're the context of the heart. Um, being in the presence of love, truly loving it, bliss. Being the presence of true love and truly hating it is torment. There it is. Uh, so it's it, that's why you, God, couldn't God free everybody from hell? Yeah, if he wanted to rape them, um, that's divine rape. Forcing, you know. Um, uh, because a, a saint once said that on his deathbed that he no longer fears God but loves him. I think that was St. Anthony actually, yeah. Um, and people, I've said that on here early on on YouTube and people have said, Oh, see, that's like Stockholm Syndrome. No, it's growing up as a Jew, fearing him, and then realizing, oh, there's nothing to fear. Or maybe it was St. John that said that. Um, papal supremacy. Uh, I didn't realize this one was long. Here are some quotes from Church of Fathers uh, from the eastern half of the church that the Roman Catholics used to support papal supremacy. Um, where is the bishop? Let there be a multitude of believers, be even as were Jesus is. There is the Catholic Church. You do realize that we consider ourselves the Catholic Church, the one and only Catholic Church, that the Roman Catholic Church is an imposter apostate, right? You do understand that. That the only reason we call ourselves Eastern Orthodox is to differentiate. We actually refer to ourselves as Catholic a hell of a lot more than the Roman Catholic Church, and that the Roman Catholic Church in turn calls itself Orthodox. Both churches, since they they are claiming the same position, both churches claim, why is this, this hand lighter than, okay, I'm not going to try to understand the camera. Uh, both churches are trying to claim the same thing, right? We're the true church. We are the one true Catholic and Apostolic Church. No, F you, we are the one true, or we are the one true holy Catholic and apostolic church. And then the other one guy says, no, I am the only spokesman for the one true holy Catholic and apostolic church. And only the people that listen to me are the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. So Catholic, yeah, the, we are Catholic. We've always been the Catholics. Um, and read Ignatius. Read Ignatius of Antioch. Read Clement of Alexandria, or Clement of Rome, 
when he's talking about this. Um, uh, Shepherd Hermas, the early stuff, there's a council of bishops in Rome, a council of elders in Rome. Not even, there's not one bishop, there's not one guy. The earliest Latin Rite Father is Tertullian, who hates the Pope and tells him to fuck off and that he has no business and he's an evil pagan son of a bitch um, and applies pagan titles to him. Irenaeus of Leon, again, says, fuck off, you have no business, you have no authority over me, all bishops are evil. Uh, Cyprian of Carthage tells Pope Stephen, go fuck yourself, I'm not going to listen to you, we don't have to listen to you, all bishops are equal. So the earliest of the Western Church Fathers and the earliest writings from Rome and to Rome, one, they don't even show one bishop in Rome, and when they do, they speak of him as just a bombastic asshole. Uh, that wasn't always the case. We love many of the bishops, the ancient bishops of Rome, um, Pope Gregory the Great, uh, well, that you guys call him, we call him Gregory Dialogus. Um, I actually disagreed with Cyprian and liked Stephen the Greek, Stephen the Second, Pope of Rome, but yeah, he was right. Stephen didn't have any authority over Carthage because guess who the bishop of Rome had, um, had authority over? The people in Rome. And it, it then became the Latin language. I mean, Rome was a backwater for most of it. You have Sophronius and Cyril up here. I mean, I can read these things out. Um, again, where is it stating the Pope of Rome? I, I don't... Uh, I, I, get, I see nothing in here of... And anyways... Yes, you must be in, com in, in full communion with the Pope of Rome in order to be part of the Orthodox Church, Catholic Church, whatever you want to call it, when we weren't divided, yeah. When the Pope went into heresy, when there became Roman Catholic and Eastern Orthodox, the Pope became a heretic. All the statements about the Pope before 1054, we accept. That's fine. Um, well, I shouldn't say all of them. Some of them are bloviated. I mean, it was a position of honor because Rome was such a damn backwater. About less than less than 100 years after the Roman Empire becomes Christian, the West falls. And the only reason Rome existed and wasn't torn to the frickin' ground is because the Byzantines just took over the little area around the city of Rome and left the West to follow its own devices. The West fell into the Dark Ages, and the East was shining bright until the Muslims came up. I mean, I'm, I'm looking through these, and I see nothing. I mean, there's nothing that supports the, the Roman Catholic view. It's just, yeah, hey, the, at that one period of time, the, the and, and again, it doesn't even say this, but I'll grant that it'll say this. The Pope of Rome is correct in what he's saying. Yeah, when he wasn't a freaking heretic preaching transubstantiation, purgatory, and changing everything and running roughshod over the very creed of Christendom of the Nicene Creed. So it's, it's, none of these mean anything. Sorry to be that harsh, but, and Maximus the Confessor, nah. Uh, one more thing, um, the Greeks temporarily reconciled with Rome. Yeah, Florence, right? And all of those bishops were executed. Only Mark of Ephesus survived. They were hanged. They were stabbed by their own people. We said, we will be under the turban of the Turk and not the mitre of the Pope. We prefer the turban to the mitre. We would rather be subjugated by Muslims because they said, we'll, be, we'll go back under, we'll, not back under, we'll submit to your heresy. Just save us from the Muslims. And the people executed the bishops when they returned. It was Mark of Ephesus that held out. He was held out of orthodoxy. So it was a robber council. When the people fully reject what the bishop says, kind of like Nestorius, um, or any number of heretics you can think of that were in high positions in the church, uh, they get executed, or banished, or thrown out. They are apostates. I mean, think how many popes of Rome, uh, the, the Roman Catholic Church says, yeah, they're in hell right now. Or at least says, yeah, they're, that, were, that was the Borgias, the Borgias, Rodrigo Borgia, uh, what, Alexander the Sixteenth, friggin' evil psychopath, a narcissist, sleeping with his daughter, he had a bunch of children, he just kept murdering and killing people, and he was the Mafia. Um, I'll go through these more in depth when I'm not 
running on no sleep and I've got Siri on the mind so I'm very aggressive so forgive that uh, just very kind of worked up today as it is I'm gonna go to sleep I'll wake up and answer these in more in depth but this is just the overview peace to you may God say Serbia Siri and Ireland